good, good, good. So I pray you guys, listen, by show of likes, show of hearts, how many of you guys were actually tuned in last week? How many of you guys saw uh, my video from last week? So I, I kind of jumped this thing on on my birthday. Uh, so we're beginning Mobilize Mondays. One of the assignments of my life, one of the passions of my life is to empower people. Uh, I've done it my entire life. And uh, I guess we're just in a season where God begins to crystallize what it is that he's going to have you have you do in the earth. And, uh, and I'm extremely excited about that. Uh, I had two of my great friends here, Prophets Jermaine and Rebecca Francis, were with me. Uh, you watched it great. Um, were with us yesterday. And uh, one of the words that uh, Prophetess Rebecca shared was that this is a year where God is causing people to be acquainted with and introduced to some of the things that you're going to do for the next 30 years or more of your life. And so I believe that this is a year where God is bringing weight and clarity to your assignment, all right? So I'm starting to feel the Holy Ghost flowing already, so I'm gonna go ahead and pray, and then we're gonna, we're gonna do this. Now, throughout the time that we're talking and we're sharing, I want you to share this. I want you to help us get this word out. The more people you tag, the more people you share this to, the more we can get this message into the lives of people that's gonna advance the kingdom, all right? So Father, thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, I invite you now to just capture this time, to captivate every person who is watching this, every person who is tuning in now and that will watch it later. God, I declare that breakthrough is going to come to them. I declare that freedom is about to hit their lives, that liberty is about. And God, I declare that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So I thank you that liberty is flowing right here in this room and right where they're watching. And Father, I thank you for the results and the fruit on the other side of this in Jesus' name. All right, so last week, just by, uh, by, by way of review, I began this series that God gave me roughly a month ago. Uh, I was praying and just seeking the Lord, and the Lord said to me, he, saw, he brought up the phrase to me, breaking containment. He said, I want to cause you to break containment. Now, I was getting ready. I had a couple engagements coming up. I was in a series presently at our church. And, uh, and so I did, I, I felt like I was right where God wanted me to be in that series. And then I had a time where, you know, we we're going to be mobilizing others to preach as well. And so I was like, well, God, what do you want me to say? When am I supposed to preach this? And the Lord said to me, this is what I want you to do. I want you, number one, everywhere you go for the, for the remainder of this year, I want you to, this is your assignment to break Containment off of the lives of believers and off the life even of unbelievers. And then the second thing he said was, I want you to teach this exclusively online. I want you to teach it online to individuals who will watch. And so for the next however long that God tells me to. Now, this is more than one message. It is a word from the Lord that as I begin to press into God, many of you that are ministers and leaders, you know how that goes. When God begins to speak something to you. Um, it unfolds as you press into it. Revelation is progressive. It keeps unfolding. It keeps growing. And so the more I seek God, the more clarity he gives me about breaking containment. So, number one, I got to define for you what containment is. Containment is a military strategy designed to stop the advancement or expansion of a perceived enemy. So it is, a, it is a military tactic or military strategy that says this perceived enemy is advancing too much or they are a threat by their advancement. Therefore, I have to do whatever is necessary to stop them from progressing, from expanding, and from moving into what God has called them to do in the earth. And so there are people watching me right now that have been trying to figure out why do I feel stuck? What is this invisible barrier that has me limited, that has me restricted, that won't allow my ministry to grow beyond a certain place, won't allow my business to grow beyond a certain place, won't allow my family to move beyond a certain place, won't allow my finances to move beyond a certain place. Bless you, David. Love you, man. Um, that, that we're wondering, what is that thing that is against me? I, number one, want to say to you that if you are experiencing that kind of strategic satanic warfare, it is because you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Satan only fights what he fears. Remember that. And if you are in that, now, not every tactic of the enemy 
is an all-out attack to kill you. Because once Satan understands that he cannot kill you, his next agenda is to corrupt you. Because Satan has no problem promoting the perverted. When you have been corrupted, Satan is not afraid. Matter of fact, he is in favor of giving you more platforms, more influence, and more opportunities. Watch this. Glory to God. Satan offered Jesus the kingdoms of this world and the glory thereof if he would bow down and worship. So could it be that there are some doors that are opening because individuals bowed and not because it was the favor of the Lord? I want you to understand that. And so whenever Satan understands that you are the type of individual that is being fruitful, uh, Exodus 1 talks about how when the children of Israel began to multiply, Dr. K. Park shares, shared about this several weeks ago, when the children of Israel began to multiply and increase, Pharaoh became intimidated by their advancement. Glory to God. So for those of you that are watching me right now, like Barbara, who's advancing in different spheres of life and business, she's expanding um, in family and in ministry don't be surprised when the enemy comes up with a tactic when he knows he can't corrupt you he will then turn around and try to contain you keep you in a corner keep you at a place where uh, where you feel like you can go this far but you can't go any further than that you know I want to declare that to you that that the reason why God has me sharing this with you is because your life was never designed to be contained now this is what we're going to do Let's go to Genesis chapter number one. You can go ahead and turn there now. Genesis chapter number one. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, verse number 28. Then I want to show you a couple of things and we're going to have some fun. Genesis chapter one, verse number 28. The Bible says, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. So four things he says right here. Be fruitful, multiply, multiply. Feel or replenish the earth, subdue it. Then the fifth word he says, have dominion. So he says, I've blessed you. I've empowered you. I've endowed you. Here's what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to be fruitful. That means I have put you here to bear fruit. That fruit is going to be a result of the seed God planted in you. Whatever seed of word he's put in you, he expects you to manifest that thing and reproduce after your own kind. The second thing he says is, I want you to multiply. Everybody type that, multiply. God says, I want you to multiply. So he's not just talking about having kids. He's talking about, I want you to be fruitful in your life. I want you to multiply in your life. I want there to be more of you. If he's speaking in terms of the church, he's saying, I need more people to get saved. I need more people to be set free. I need more people to be delivered. If it's business, I want more increase in your business. And not just one location, multiple locations, not just one client, multiple clients. God is trying to bring you into a time of multiplication. I feel the Holy Ghost here to tell you, many of you watching me now, you have got to develop a growth mentality. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. You have got to develop a multiplication mentality. Is what it means. You've got to come to a place where you are not comfortable where you are. You are not satisfied in stagnation. You are not okay. There are two, there are so many people watching me right now, particularly, you know, there are those in my region, other regions of the world, some of in your family, that the moment you get a mentality to move forward and multiply, you experience all types of adversity. Right? But God has designed you to be at a place of multiplication. If you're in a ministry, don't be satisfied. Some people say, I want to be a part of a small church. There's nothing wrong with a small church. Nothing wrong with that. However, here's what we have to remember. We have a mandate to multiply. So here's what that means. If I got 10 people in my church, multiplication at least starts with two. So 10 times two means we ought to be trying to get to 20. 20 times 2 means we ought to at least be trying to get to 40. Why? Because we ought to be multiplying. Are you understanding me? So if you are in a church and you are saying, I don't want us to grow, then you are not in line with what God has called you to because God has assigned us to multiply. Glory to God. And so he says, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to fill the earth. Why fill the earth? I, I want you 
to take what I'm going to start you with, and I want you to fill the earth with the kingdom of God. Here's what he says. You're going to have to subdue, meaning there's going to be some resistance to your advancement. Help me hold the ghost. There's going to be some resistance to your advancement. Subdue means you're going to have to put some stuff under you. Meaning you're going to have an adversary who doesn't want to see you advance in a particular area. There's going to be an adversary who doesn't want you to get in different territories. That doesn't want you to reach different people. But remember, this is all connected to the assignment. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Are you following me? Subdue it. And then he says have dominion. He says so your dominion or our dominion means we are causing people to surrender to the reign of God. Meaning them getting saved, them yielding to God. Are you following me? Now, I'm going to take it a step further. So he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Now watch how God starts it. Chapter number two of Genesis. Watch it. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. All right? So he plants a garden. So when God wants to fill the earth, he starts a man in a garden. All right, watch. Y'all don't even know how bad I want to just get up and walk right now. It's not even funny. All right? So watch what God does. God says, I want you to fill the whole earth. But when he forms man, he puts him in a garden. So there is a such thing as divine containment. Where God puts you in a contained place for your development. And he cultivates your capacity in the context of containment. So he, he says, before I expand you, let me see how well you handle where I plant you. And so there are so many people that are always asking for more and dreaming for more that are not advancing in the environment where God has planted them. If you're receiving this, come on, let me see you. Put some likes up if you're getting this. Put some likes up if you So God says... I put you where I want you, Pastor Adams. And he says, I want you to work that garden because in the contained place, you learn the fundamentals, glory to God, that you're going to need when he expands you to the next level. But if you are not faithful in obscurity, you will never see multiplication come in your life. If you're not faithful over the little bit of money that you have, so you say, the devil got me contained, only making this much. No, it may be that God is allowing the containment because you have not proven the principle of faithfulness in the small place. And so God says, because you've not been faithful over little, I know I can't yet trust you with the much. And so God says, I'm watching you and I have allowed the containment. Because when God gets ready, glory to God, this is for somebody, you're about to get excited. When God gets ready for you to break containment, here's what it does. Satan gets nervous because you outgrow where you start. Satan begins to get nervous because he can see you coming. I feel like preaching. <laughs> when you start growing, watch this. Satan didn't try to kill Joseph. When he came into, when he finally got into pop, into Pharaoh's palace and he's interpreting the dream. They don't try to kill Joseph then, right? They don't try to kill him then. When, when his father moves to Egypt and, and they give him, give his family Goshen, the most prosperous piece of land. But when a new Pharaoh comes and in Exodus 1, the children of Israel start growing too much. All of a sudden, Satan wants to contain what God is now cultivating. Can I preach to somebody? If you be faithful where you are, you'll outgrow it. If you be faithful on the level that God has placed you, hallelujah. If you be faithful there, God's getting ready to expand you. And the attacks will intensify when Satan can see you growing because sometimes he can see it before you can. I hope you're getting that. All right, so he plants him in a particular garden, not because God intends for him to stay there, but he intends for him to grow as the garden grows. Do you hear what I just said? So while you're focused on growing the garden, God is focused on growing you. Because as your capacity expands, 
your, your realm of influence begins to expand. So I want, you, I want you to see that. So God has a growth and advancement mentality. We are here to advance the kingdom of God. We are here to advance the kingdom of God. Let me, matter of fact, say this one more thing before I get into really what I want to what I want to get, get into today. You got to understand that what Satan is ultimately afraid of is the establishment and advancement of God's kingdom. I need to take this a step further. There's a lot of a lot of shouting, a lot of prophesying, a lot of preaching about doors opening, right? So we preach about it, we shout about it. We all love open doors. Come on. We love for God to open a door no man can shut, right? We all love it. But here's what I think we have lost sight of. Doors, hallelujah, in the scripture, doors were strategically designed as to be opportunities for the gospel to win and the kingdom to be established. So when God opens doors for a kingdom believer, for a child of God, it is not just a door for more money and more notoriety. It's not just a door for more fame and more popularity. It's not just a door for you to sit in a place and your dream to come to pass. When God opens doors, and you are a kingdom representative, a child of the king. God has now opened that door in some way, shape, form, or fashion for his kingdom to be advanced. I need you to get that. I need you to get that. Because what is happening is we got people praying for doors simply because they want to be seen in the room. And not because they want the gospel to be advanced in the room. And so... We got people who have ambition to position and platforms and stages who have no idea what I'm called to deliver once I get into the room. God is not obligated to open the door for people who don't realize what they're supposed to deliver once they walk through the door. I feel the Holy Ghost on that for somebody. Could it be God is saving some of you right now from being irrelevant when you get in the room? Sometimes God, glory to God, because have you considered the needs of the room you're asking God to bring you into? Have you considered the pains? Have you considered the problems of the room God you've asked him to bring you into? So God says, when I open the door, Paul says, a door was open to me, but it was open for the gospel. He says, pray that a door will be open to me. Why? So the gospel can be advanced. Not just so I can get a paycheck. Not just so I can be, I need somebody to understand this. When God opens a door for Joseph in Pharaoh's house, it is so God's kingdom can be advanced. When God opens a door for David in Saul's kingdom, it is so the kingdom of God can be advanced. When God opens a door for whoever you are, it is because God says, I've got my kingdom on my mind, not just your, not just your own being seen and all of those things. Am I helping anybody? Right? Now, I know we don't talk about this stuff much, but I'm telling you, it is the reason why there are some people watching me right now. You are depressed over doors you ain't designed for. You're depressed over a door that if God opened the door, you would know what to do when you walk through the door. Not from a divine perspective, and I don't mean that to be rude, but, but it's the reason why God will take you through process. Because in process, he purifies the motivation. In process... The process becomes so painful that you question whether or not you still even want the promise. And it is at that point God gets you to a point where he says, now I can trust you because you're not in it for the treasure. You're in it for the purpose. And so some of you ought to praise God right now that he pressed pause on your progress so that he could purify your perspective. God says, I want to get you ready so that when I open the door, you can release heaven into a room because you, you weren't just there to be seen. I hope that's helping somebody. Now, I want to talk to people that are watching me right now that feel like you're in a place of containment. You're like, well, I, I know what God wants me to do now. I feel like I've gone through process. I've been there. I've been there where... You know, you, you know that God is always processing you and always working on something in your life and always developing you in a certain way. And, uh, and you get to a point, you're like, Lord, why am I stuck here? You know, why am I stuck at this place of, of impact, this place of influence? Why do I feel like I'm stuck here? And last week, I dealt with the blind man in Matthew 9. But these two blind men who followed Jesus and he opened up their eyes because they were willing to say yes, Right? But today I want to deal with another blind man, and here's the reason why. 
I believe one of the first keys to breaking containment in your life is revelation. You need God to reveal himself, reveal who you are, reveal what is against you. Because sometimes without revelation, you are left to your own perception. Right? For example, 2 Kings 6, the prophet Elisha and his servant wake up and they've been surrounded by the Syrian army. All right? The servant looks out the window and he's like, oh, master, we're getting ready to die. These people have surrounded us. Elisha doesn't panic. He prays. He says, Lord, open up his eyes. Notice, he didn't say, Lord, move the army. Move our enemy. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Because this young man is only contained if he can't see who's got him covered. Are you following me here? See, there are some of you, your, problem, your only problem is... You could be liberated if you could see better. If you could get a vision of what God is doing, of your help, and if you would see that who has you surrounded, that's right, that's right, uh, Minister Brooks there, souls, 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 that equals multiplication, that's exactly right, all right? And I would take it further, not just souls, I would say multiplication, Multi uh, or, or discipleship brings multiplication because people get saved, but then they got to become disciples. So, so you got to be able to see in the spirit that God is for you. I hope you're following me. All right, so I need revelation. I need to be able to see. Now, go with me to Mark chapter 8. I'm going to talk about this a little bit, then I'm going to try to get out of your way. I don't want to hold you long today. Give me about 14 minutes. I think we, I think we can wrap it up. Y'all good? Press like if, you, if you're with me. Go ahead and share this with somebody because you know they need to hear this. They have felt contained, but God is about somebody watching me right now. I just sense the spirit of God. That God is breaking containment off of your life. That strategy of Satan to keep you contained and to limit your progress and your mobility, God is breaking that thing off your life. Mark chapter number 8, verse number 22. Bible says, Then Jesus came to Bethsaida. Well, then he came, he being Jesus, came to Bethsaida, the house of fish, that's what it means. And they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. So he took the blind man by the hand, led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands on him. He asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Thank you, Lord. Then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in the town. Here's what, here's what I'm going to talk about. All of that was my introduction just to tell you this. <laughs> that God wants to give you, listen to me, God wants to give you vision beyond your village. Vision beyond your village. Um, I was a youth pastor at Harvest Time Church in Houston, Texas for almost two years there with Bishop Shelton Beatty. Um, into my second year there, uh, the Lord spoke, my pastor here in Columbus, Mississippi retired due to health reasons. The Lord spoke, and I knew that it was time to go home, but I submitted it to Bishop Beatty uh, because I do believe that next levels require proper honor on the level you're on. If you've gone to another level, but you've not honored the leaders that are, that are on you, I don't think God promoted you. You may have promoted yourself. If, if, if you, by dishonor, dishonor, decided to do, that's not a promotion from God because God promotes in response to honor. And so I honored him and I gave him the opportunity to just seek into my life and to help me to, to discern the will of God in that particular situation. And so he said to me, he said to me, you're going back to a place that's a small town or a small city. He says, and I don't want the small size of your city to diminish your large vision. I don't want a small town to diminish your big vision. Here's what I mean. Because what he understands is that, that God, help me Holy Ghost, when God shows you something, you can't shrink it down to the size of where you are. You have to believe that God will expand and enlarge where you are for the fulfillment of what God showed you. I remember a man told me this. He said, you better move up north or somewhere because this city is too small for what you, for what you want to do. Number one, I was trying to figure out, well, what did he think I wanted to do? Number two, what my response to him was, well, I guess the city's just going to have to grow. 
Because if God sent me here and God showed me this, then I believe God can do big things in small places. If you believe that, hit like, hit like, hit like if you believe that. All right? Now check this. Jesus comes to Bethsaida. Bethsaida is a small town. It's a small fishing village that's right by the Lake Gennesaret. And, uh, and he comes to this little small village. And when he gets to the village, they bring a blind man to him. And they beg him to touch this blind man. Bring the blind man. They say, Jesus wants you to touch him. He comes to Bethsaida. Okay? He comes to Bethsaida. When he gets to Bethsaida, this small fishing town, this small environment, um, they bring a blind man. Bring a blind man and say, Lord, you need to touch him. Now, here's what the Lord began to show me. The first thing that Jesus does is take this man by the hand. Watch this. He takes him by the hand and removes him from the village. He takes him out of the town. Now, this is interesting. If he's getting ready to heal the blind man, why is he removing him from the town? Let's talk about Bethsaida for a minute. Because... Bethsaida was also the place that Andrew the disciple was from, Peter was from, Philip was from, and John was from. But according to Matthew chapter 11, Jesus rebuked, he rebuked the city of Bethsaida along with a few other cities because they did not respond with repentance when he revealed himself. Help me, Holy Ghost. All right, check this out. The word blindness means this. It is a spiritual condition of those who are either unwilling or unable to receive revelation. Let me say it again. Spiritual blindness is a condition of those who are either unwilling or unable to perceive divine revelation. Here's what he means. Jesus has come to Bethsaida. Help me, Holy Ghost. He's come to Bethsaida. He's worked miracles. He's done amazing things. But the people never got who he was they never got a revelation that brought about a response for repentance here's what it means some of you are in churches help me holy ghost some of you are in families some of you are in cities where god is doing amazing things but he's not just working miracles for the sake of working miracles there's a message in the miracle that says repent and believe in who i am he rebukes not just a few people in the city, he rebukes the entire city. Because I believe God has always been in the business of you are being fought on the level God is taking you to, but you only see it on the level you are right now. So Bethsaida has seen the revelation of God, but they did not repent. They never changed the way they thought. Let me say this again. Some of you guys are living in cities where God's doing great things in and through different ministries. So when God does this and sends particular gifts, particular ministries to a place, he is giving that city, that region, that nation, the opportunity to repent. When they don't, God rebuke them. So there is what we would consider a curse over Bethsaida. So here's what Jesus does. They bring a blind man to him and say, Lord, touch him. They say, Lord, touch this blind man. Heal this blind man. But could it be that the same ones that were concerned about his condition were contributing to it? Help me, Holy Ghost. I hope you're catching this. That the same people that were saying, oh, help this blind boy, were the same ones that were contributing to his blindness. I hope you're getting that. That the same people, hallelujah, that were, that were saying, the poor man can't see. He can't see anything greater than where he is. That they were the ones who were contributing to it because they were blind. And so what Jesus says is if I'm going to show you what I, what I will show you, I have to cause you to exit one environment so that I can expose you to something greater. Are you following me? All right. So the Bible says he takes the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Listen. And I'm, I may not be saying this literally to everybody. Some of you, this is literal. Some of you, this is, uh, this is figurative or metaphoric for different relationships you need to disconnect from. Sometimes it's different neighborhoods you need to disconnect from. Sometimes it's environments you need to disconnect from. But sometimes before God can restore your vision, he has to remove you from your village. Here's why. Because your village 
affects your value system. Your village, Jesus does not, help me, Holy Ghost, want this man to open up his eyes again and just see small. God said, I can't open your eyes up in this environment because it's too small. You are around people, he says, who have no revelation of me. If I open your eyes and allow your vision to be influenced by the venom of the village people, then you will operate from that context because that's all you've seen. So he says, I'm not even going to open your eyes in the village. I've got to bring you out of it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So for people that are going through separations in this season, where God is causing you to say, man, I love them, but I can't hang with them the way I used to. Maybe it's because God is ready to restore your vision. And when you open your eyes, he doesn't want your vision to be shaped by your containment. He wants it to be shaped by your relationship and the revelation of Christ and his kingdom. I hope you're following me. All right. So he says, I got to get you out of town. Somebody ought to just type, get out of town, get out of town, get out of town. Some of y'all need to just get out of town. Some of y'all need to just get out of that comfort zone. You need to get out of that environment. Let me read something the Holy Ghost gave me. He said, for some of you to become who you're called to be, you may have to leave the environment you are comfortable in. For some of you to become who you're called to be, you may have to leave the environment that you're comfortable in. Right? You may have to leave the environment where everybody knows your nickname. And I know the fearful thing is this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Sometimes the fearful thing is this. That you may not like where you are or what you're in, but at least you're familiar with it. And some of us, our commitment to comfort and certainty is going to be the thing that cancels out our capacity for what God called us to do. So he says, get on out of town before I show you what I need to show you. So when he gets him out of the town, he spits on his eyes. And Dr. Simon Rodriguez did a great job explaining this, that there are many uh, people now that can discover your DNA and your ancestry through your spit or through your saliva. So in other words, what he explains is this, that what God does is, he says, out of your DNA, out of how your mom and them brought you up and what your family's seen and what your community's seen, you're only gonna see so much. He said, but through the lens of who you are in Christ, through Christ, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. When I get a revelation of who Jesus is and who he is in me, now I can see differently than I've ever seen before. All right? So he says, he spits on his eyes, and he puts his hand on him, and he said, do you see anything? I got a question. Do you see anything? I had a question for somebody. Do you see anything? Because if you don't see anything, you can't get out of where you are. If you don't get a vision, you can't come out of where you are. And so you can't break containment without vision. You're always going to be stuck in Bethsaida. Watch this. He raised up Andrew. He raised up Philip. He raised up Peter. He raised up John. But watch this. None of them stayed in Bethsaida. Because they had to leave the environment of the familiar if they were going to fulfill their divine assignment. There are some environments that, can, that are conducive and some are not. He says, do you see anything? Here's what he says. I see men like trees walking. Now, I don't want to go too long in that because I'm trying to wrap up. He says, I see men, they look like trees. Here's what I want to explain to you. Sometimes when God first gives you vision, when you first start developing vision, you don't see clearly. It's just like when you've been sitting in the dark all your life or you've been in, the, in a dark room and they pull the shades back. At first, your eyes can't see right. Right? You see men bigger than they are. Glory to God. Some of you, your problem is you see men too big. <laughs> They've got too much influence on everything you believe. Their opinions matter too much. But when the light first comes on, you can't see clearly. But here's what Jesus did. He put his hands on him again. God is willing to touch you as many times as necessary to get your vision restored. Why is this important? Because you're going to have to expose yourself to a different environment if you're going to see God reveal himself the way he wants to. It's at this point that his vision is restored and he can see everyone clearly. Now watch this, last thing. He sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone 
in the town. I want to close with this. Here's the reason why I came to you and, and I want to talk to you about this in breaking containment. Because God began to deal with me. He said, son, some people are contained by their environment. And it's obvious in the text that the environment has been affecting this young man. So this man can't see, has no vision because of where he's hanging out. Everybody around him has rejected Jesus. Everybody around him has rejected the kingdom. Everybody around him has rejected the possibilities of what God could do, right? All of them have rejected him. He is in an environment of people who have chosen to reject God. And unless he escapes the environment, the environment will always skew what he can see. Watch what Jesus says. Here's how we know it's the environment. When he opens his eyes, he said, don't go back to that town and don't tell anybody in that town. Why? He said, because if you go back to that place, that place is going to stifle. What is that place for you? What is that place? What is that place that chokes out your vision? Glory to God. Jesus. What is that place that is crippling your capacity? What is that place that's hindering you from being everything that God's ordained you to be? And who are those people? He says, don't tell anyone. Why? Because sometimes when you tell a kingdom vision to village people, they will poison your divine perspective. So I want to declare to people right now that God is about to pull you out of your comfort zone. Hallelujah. Just lift those hands where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are pulling us out of our comfort zone. I declare that right now you are breaking containment off of individuals' lives. I declare now that the spirit of wisdom and revelation are flowing to people that are watching this. I declare that right now, God, somebody is seeing something they've never seen before. Father, I thank you that somebody is getting the courage to walk away from their containment and enter into a season of discovery and revelation. Father, I declare that right now, every stronghold in their environment, every principality that has blinded them, that spirit of blindness that hovers over their family, that hovers over their region, we pull that thing down and we declare now that you are separating them unto your purpose and unto your plan. Father, I thank you now that you are anointing their eyes to see, their ears to hear, and their spirit and heart to sense. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, I pray you receive that. This is some of you right now. Do not be shocked if, if as you discover revelation of what God wants to do in your life, that you come up against adversities. Listen, Satan is not going to keep you contained. You may have to escape the environment, be exposed to something greater so that you can become all that God has ordained for you to be. But I want you to do that. All right. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to share this. Go follow me uh, on, on uh, uh, Instagram. If you're not, follow me on Instagram at Bishop R.J. Matthews. Follow us on Facebook at Robert Matthews. Uh, you can go to YouTube, either Catalyst 360, or you could go to We Are Kingdom Vision or Bishop R.J. Matthews right there on, uh, on YouTube as well. You can follow me, track with me. Uh, this is a word that I believe God has me sharing in this season. Pray with me because here's my prayer. I believe in God for dynamic deliverance to happen in people's lives. We got to get this gospel out. We got to advance the kingdom and we cannot be stopped. Amen. So listen, if you're watching this right now, glory to God. I'll be maybe you're in the Kansas City, Missouri area. I will be there this coming Thursday night, I, uh, Wednesday night, excuse me. I'll be with Pastor Brian Gallardo there Wednesday night in Kansas City at LifeGate uh, KC. Their uh, awesome church there. I'm going to be there Wednesday night. It's going to be an amazing time. We're going to be believing God to break containment. Got a totally different message than the one I just shared. So if you're anywhere close, you want to be there because something special is going to happen. Um, everybody else, listen, go to my page. Follow me. Thank you to everybody who sewed in on my birthday uh, towards our building project. Somebody else is watching me now. This word is blessing. One of the greatest things you can do is sow. And uh, one of the greatest things you can do is begin to walk in what God has called you to do. All right? So take advantage of it. Sow into it. God bless you. You got to get out of that village, baby. You got a big vision. God bless you.